Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and one loss. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs already 77.4 kilograms. Representing Street Sport Bulgarian Top Team and fighting out of Belgium. Give it up for Isa. Me and Card kicking off an explosive between Isa Isakov and Rami Ahmed. Rami is fired up. He's absolutely loving the introduction from the roaring lion, Carlos Kramer, right there. Rami looking loose, looking loose, keeping that jabbing hand nice and low out of the peripheral vision of Isa Isakov. Isakov trying to stalk, holding center cage, trying to move in. Rami utilizing that lateral movement, side oh! to side. Beautiful work from Rami Ahmed just to step in and take the power out of that kick. When you see the confidence of Isa Isakov even being willing to throw a kick like that. Isakov still holding center cage, trying to stop. Trying to wait for that moment to pull the trigger. Oh, oh rip to the body. Never shot. Rami the body snatcher Ahmed with a shot like that. <laughs> Isa trying to find range with that jab, but it's very difficult to hit a target that's constantly moving side to side, getting their head off that center line, switching stances. Rami now occupying the southpaw stance. Right in front of us here in our broadcast position. In on the legs! Isa Isakov in on a single, Ow! gets Rami Ahmed down, beautiful wrestling. What can Isakov do with this position? If Rami Ahmed can pop back to his feet, this is, a, this is probably the seminal moment of the whole fight. If he can't, it's probably the seminal moment of the whole fight. Switching to scarf is Isakov, real strong, solid wrestling and boxing fundamentals. What's at stake here, Phil, is everything. Underhook from Rami Ahmed trying to shift his weight out, but he's a top taking he's the up. back. And he's out! It's a cheeky little hook for his troubles right there. Rami Ahmed showing he can be taken down, but he can't be held down. Oh, beautiful oh, he's uppercut! He's rocked him with the uppercut, forces the shot from Isakov. That shot was completely predicated off that beautiful uppercut from Rami Ahmed. The Terminator in on the leg. Trying to hold him down, trying to limp leg out now. Great flexibility and take down defense from Rami Ahmed. Unbelievable flexibility by Rami Ahmed. Man is defying gravity right now. Oh, beautiful defensive work that's now being parlayed into offensive kinetic energy. Big elbows to the side of the dome from Rami Ahmed. Trying to figure for that arm. May look to switch with it. Beautiful work from Rami Ahmed. Scramble now, scramble. Who comes out on top? Rami Ahmed pulling into the lead. Used that figure four grip beautifully. Bull rush takedown from Hands Isakov. Hands are together attempted. by Isakov. Rami digging in for that arm. Phil, fantastic technique. Push the gloves against the cage and then walk the body down. Breaking the grip, this is highest level mixed martial arts. Speaking of breaking the grip, you're watching Rami Ahmed breaking the will of Isa Isakov in this fight. Oh, oh again! Slip and rip to the body, finishing with a sumptuous hook. Rami 
Kamehameha just stalking, getting the gauge of Isakov. Kill the liver and the head will die! He's using that fadeaway hook to beautiful, devastating effect. Watch for him to dip off the center line and rip to the body again. Rami Hamid inviting an attack so he can set up one of his own. Nice kick to the body again. Bull rush take down, scored by Isakov. Rami Ahmed has hold of the neck, wisely lets it go. Isakov now fully in the game. He knows how Rami Hamid stood up the last time. He's going to do everything in his power to keep his opponent flat on his back. May try and work for the Kimura here if he can get the position, but switches to side control on the opposite side. Rami Ahmed intelligently gets the one hit, but that's being shut down right now by the Terminator. Terminator probably wants to avoid throwing a lot of elbows right now and focus on keeping his opponent flat on his back. Inside the half guard right now is Isa Isakov, happy to land strikes with a little over 20 seconds. Switches the knee on belly, may look to slide through, does so with the side control. Isakov still fully in this fight. 10 seconds to go in the round. Big ground and pound to Punches finish. Punches raining down. Really close oh, round. Oh, kick attempt. And the round ends. What a round of action here at Brave Combat Federation 33 live. From the Irish. Prince Abdullah Alpha Sal Stadium in Jeddah. Irish Thunder, that was everything we could have asked for. Let's ask for a little more. Let's ask for a replay. Walk us right through. Here we go, replay action brought to you by Green Hill. Isa Isakov just shy with that spinning attempt. Nice work from Rami Ahmed to take that step forward just to take the sting out of the spinning attack. And it's really been about the, the striking of Rami Ahmed, that pinpoint accuracy, those beautiful body shots, and the bull rush wrestling of Isa Isakov. More often than not, Rami Ahmed was making him pay for those takedown attempts. But he did score two takedowns, so obviously the fight being subjectively judged, it's very difficult. Who do you give the, the ascendancy to, the, the striking and damage of Rami Ahmed or the takedowns landed by Isa Isakov? All the play for going into round two, Kirik. Big shout out, Phil, to our retail partner, Al Andalus Mall. Again, big shout out, retail partner, Al Andalus Mall. Inside leg kick from Rami Ahmed to open up. Looks light on his feet. Rami Ahmed returning to the circular footwork that served him so well the previous round. Isakov trying to get close enough to shoot. Maybe land a, land a right. Rami just beat that oh, uppercut. There's a right. Nice. Rami Ahmed is really investing in the body. Isakov smiling at the action. He's enjoying this even more than all the fans of Brave Nation are. Rami Ahmed actually able to implement that beautiful movement. Wasn't able to last time tore his MCL nine days before his last fight. So now he's going in healthy. He's able to utilize that beautiful movement. But speaking of beautiful, nice shot landed by Isakov. Isakov starting to close the distance, finding his range with those arms. Isakov wants to get into a firefight here, but Rami Ahmed intelligently keeping it structured, keeping the distance, not being baited. That's a crushing kick. Shots landed from both men. The Terminator returning in this round. Oh, and there's that takedown. Can he complete the double? You switch to a single. Got his opponent down, can he keep him down? Rami has one butterfly hook, now looking to close the guard around his ace of He could be stepping through, using that as a knee slide pass into side control. Round two, return of the Terminator. Savage elbows coming down, looking to pop a rib. Nice positional control from Isakov. Trying to isolate that wrist, taking away one 
of the pivot points, one of the levers of Rami Ahmed. Sipo Grep may look to try and get the hooks in here. Beautiful reversal, reversal from Rami Ahmed. Fortune. Rami Ahmed's a little bit high on the back, may look to transition to the arm. Little bit of a scramble here, little ambiguity. And the Terminator ends up on top. Isakov in the side control now, keeping the hips nice and low, sprawling out, switching. Maybe looking for the Americana or the Kimura in such a position. Thought about knee on belly, Rami Ahmed intelligently gets his own knee up to the hip of Isakov to defend. Sometimes this has to happen for a fighter, Phil. Sometimes you have to take a beating in the first round to get a perfect understanding of your opponent's game. I think that's what's happened. Now Rami Hamid has to figure out his opponent's game because he's on bottom and being tightly controlled. Has to do as much as he can to turn in toward Isakov. Isakov doing well just to take away one of the, the levers of Rami Ahmed by isolating that arm. There's that knee ride. Forces Rami Ahmed to give up the back. Can he get the hooks in? Has one in. Rami Ahmed. Full mount. Bottom mount. Full mount for Isakov. Takes the arm. Oh, that's tight. That's super tight. The thumb is turned up. That is right on the leg. the armpit. This is as tight as arm bars get. Oh, that's the top. It is over. Isa, the Terminator Isakov says, Hasta la vista, Rami Ahmed. Beautiful arm bar and takes the arm and with that takes his Brave Combat Federation debut, his ledger to 1-0 and oh with a huge upset win. Terminator, one round comes storming back in round two and takes it with perhaps the tightest arm bar we have ever seen in the Brave Cage. What a story this fight was. Breaking down our Green Hill replay now. We see the beginning of the turnaround. It began with a long straight right. Another right. An exchange between these two warriors. We may get to see the takedown, and here he is. This wasn't the beginning, and this was the beginning of the end. Bottom mount. Monster shots coming down when you're in bottom mount. You can keep your arms down or leave them up. If they're down, they protect your head. If they're up, you can try and push your opponent away, but he can snatch it from you. The knees are pushed together, the elbow is separating, and it gets worse. That elbow is now at the breaking point. The wrist is underneath the armpit. There's an adjustment. The legs force the head down. The arm is now forced backwards. And a tap is inevitable. Watching a little bit more action that led up to it. And that is the Brave Replay. Let's take it up to Carlos Kramer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another explosive ending. This comes to a close at four minutes and four seconds of the second round. Your winner by tap out by the Terminator, Issa Cole! Guy's known for finishes. Jamil Chan actually you will, might not believe it, but his first athletic endeavor was actually into baseball, of all sports. Gave it up because he felt it was too boring. No, he swings his legs like he's swinging a baseball bat. Absolutely. It can still be three strikes and you're out. Very good, Seb. I enjoyed that. As we alluded to earlier, when Jamil Chan is turned on, when he's switched on and ready to go, he is one of the best, one of the most dangerous strikers. A lovely sprawl there. Absolutely. 
I think we may have just got a little bit of an insight into the game plan of Issa Isakov there. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it makes sense. When you are facing someone with such dynamite in her hands, like Jamil Chan, it would be smart to, uh, to put him on, the, on her backs a little bit, or at least tire him out. Like both these men have absolute tree trunk legs. Yeah. Chan in particular. Issa Isakov happy to, to skip inside the pocket momentarily, try and land his pot shots and get out, but a little bit of a smile on the face of, of Jamil Chan there. Yeah. Nice heavy wrestling. He's been a bit, I don't want to say dismissive, but he kind of feels like Issa Isakov, you know, that he might be a little bit overhyped. He says, you know, a lot of people are talking about him, but he says that he's seen everything before. Again, at 30 years old, with over 19 professional bouts and a multitude of, of K1 kickboxing and oh, Muay Thai yeah. bouts, there's, there's very, very few looks that Jamil Chan hasn't seen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he said, obviously, he says, I know his patterns. There's, I don't underestimate him, but I have seen it before. And nice job getting out there. Looked like he may have been trying to set up the mounted triangle was Issa Isakov showing just how dangerous his submission game is. Of course, three wins by way of submission in his career. And Chan says that his favorite kickboxer is legend Gerkan Saki. Whereas his favorite MMA fighter is actually Robert Whitaker, former middleweight champion. Needs to be careful coming in, sort of needs to come in smart, needs to come in intelligent so he doesn't get caught by Isakov. Yeah, I mean, he, you can't be dismissive of your opponent's strikes because simply because your, fight, your opponent has strength in grappling and submissions, that doesn't mean that we're not packing a punch either. And especially with these small four-ounce gloves, yeah. if somebody lands right, regardless of, of how powerful, if it's technical enough, it could put you out. I like the way that Chan has been going to the body. You're already seeing redness on the side of Isakov, and he has dropped his, he did drop his guard just a little bit. Again, nice brawl from Chan, but great follow through from Isakov. Didn't give up on it at the first attempt, but needs to be wary of a potential guillotine. Guillotine negated there by the side control. Chan needs to let go of that neck. Yeah. Reclaims half guard, very smartly done. Must also be said that Chan is not just a striker, but is also a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, jiu -Jitsu, so does have that diversity in his wow. game, and that's nice wrestling right okay. there. Isakov transitions into the parterre position, a great position to land some pot shots. But Chan, you know, keeping his cool, I mean, he has been doing a very good job defensively at getting out of these positions. And in the stand-up, I do definitely feel like he has been landing the harder shots. This is not a position he wants to be in, though. You can see Isakov now just wearing on Chan, trying to flatten him out, trying to force him to carry a little bit of weight. People don't realize that Isakov's first martial art was wrestling, originally born in the Republic of Dagestan. His father was his head wrestling coach, so he does have that extensive background to call upon. Wrestling in Dagestan? Never heard of it. <laughs> Takes the almost momentary look like he was going to take the back. Lands in that full mount position. Be interesting to see what he chooses to do from here. Or should I say three-quarter mount as Chan is just holding on to below the calf there. Less than a minute to work though, but this is definitely a very advantageous position for Isakov. He does some of his best work from here. But again, slipping out the back door only momentarily though, but... Jamil Chan closes the, the half guard, may look to try and reclaim guard, but so far it's been all about the, the smothering work of yeah. Issa Isakov, which is a great way of nullifying the most dangerous tools of Jamil Chan, that being his striking. Yeah, because he, I mean, he has been put on the defensive throughout the entire first round. He hasn't, I mean, he has, while they have been separated in the stand up, he has scored some good shots to the body, but I mean, this has just mostly been the story of the fight so far. It has been Isakov on top and with Chan forced to defend grappling positions. Nah, he has been doing enough to keep himself active. That knee on belly, crushing position. Let's oh. it go and land some heavy shots. That was a good elbow there to punctuate the round from Isakov. Jamil Chan got up to his feet there, a little bit more labored than I would like to see of a fighter at the end of the first round. And as we saw in the in the pre-fight uh, package of Isakov saying that he would tire Chan out in the first two or three minutes. There might be some credence to that. And if that is the game plan, he's been implementing it very intelligently with heavy takedowns, heavy mm -hmm. top game, heavy top pressure. 
He's essentially in these positions, forcing Chan to do most of the work. But Chan is a crafty guy. I mean, he has, he's been in there with some, some of the best fighters out there, and he holds finishes via a knockout or TKO over the likes of Mohamed Grabinski, Richard Patishnok, David Zavada, truly top-notch fighters. So he knows how to get it done. But that being said, he is he is on a on a free fight skid here, so he de definitely has to turn things around. Deggy Larkin just calling for the tile to dry up a little bit of water there, trying to keep the fighters safe, making sure they don't slip. And there we go, second round started, touch of the gloves. And yeah, there, there's a lot of pop in the step of Isakov. Definitely seems like a fresher fighter. But then if you've ever watched Emil Chan, he's the kind of fighter that's like happy to plant his feet and land big strikes. Oh, yeah. Again, it leaves him a little bit. Oh, oh huge shot from Emil Chan. He's unloading. And now Isakov truly has felt the power of Jamil Dynamite Chan. I think that may just force the shot from Isakov. I don't think he wants to stand in the pocket and have oh, too many more of those exchanges. Definitely not. Nice. And I like that that Chan is throwing those kicks to the body when, when Isakov tries moving out of range. And you can see that it's already reddening up the torso. Chan's decided he's going to attack the body a little bit. Oh, oh nicely head kick. done! Head kicked in overhand and Jamil Chan is winging punches! It was just, there was just, you know, it was a game of centimeters there where he, unfortunately, was just a little bit off with a lot of those hooks. Isa Isakov reverts to type, scores that big takedown, and he's exactly where he wants to be right now, in the mounted position that he can work in. As I said, Chan has a tendency to plant the feet and swing big, but in a situation like that, you leave yourself susceptible to somebody ducking underneath and scoring the takedown. Yeah, yeah he might have gotten a bit too carried away there. Because now he is once again on the ground with Isakov in full mount, throwing shots, punches, elbows. And it is going to take a lot of work to get out of here. He's, he's, I mean, Chan is going for it. He's definitely trying to... And yet, again, he gets up. Very nicely done. Again, showing that he's not just that one-dimensional striker. He has good, good jiu-jitsu, good defensive wrestling. Has stuffed a number of takedowns and for the most part has gotten up from the takedowns. Yeah. Big leg kick from Chan. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more leg kicks from Chan, to be honest. Oh, and another punishing kick to the body there. The fact you didn't hear a snap off that shows you just how yeah. well it landed, Seb. Those usually are the ones that are the absolute worst because they just dig right in through muscle and organs. Again, Chan trying to defend that takedown, but Isa Isakov, like a dog with a bone, his corner calling him to bring him over to the cage and do his work from there. He's again trying to get that head underneath the chin. Methodical work here from Isakov. Really keeping his cool, slowly working his way over to a position he wants. But oh, and he goes for an arm bar. Again, trying to get that arm bar. That seems to be a go to submission of his lately. Finishes off a position with some strikes. But again, well defended from uh, from Jamil Chan. Nice stiff jab from Isakov and end of the takedown, but good defense thus far from Jamil Chan. May try and disengage from this position. Trying to score a takedown of his own, but against someone born in red in Dagestan with fantastic wrestling. That's a lot easier said than done, Sebastian. Oh, absolutely. That is, you know, that's trying to bite the tiger. It's just not going to work. But it would be... Okay, yeah, that was... Yeah, it was a little bit of a, a pop in the groin. Yeah, right in front of us, so we could both see and hear it quite clearly. And I think this will benefit the Chan, who looked to be the more tired of the two, heading into the second uh, bout, and was struggling with his takedown. Deki Larkin sending Isi Isikov to the neutral corner. And in a situation like this, Jamil Chan could employ a little bit of, uh, a little bit of veteran savvy and mm -hmm. a veal of the full five minutes that he's entitled to yeah. in a situation like this. And I mean, I, I don't really know why. I mean, maybe it's a pride thing, a toughness thing, but most fighters will not take the full five minutes when they are, when they do absorb a strike between, between the legs. And there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, why not take the time you need to be the best possible fighter? And here you see just in that, that clinch, Jamil Chan happy to get right back at it. 
Lower had Isakov's corner, calling for him to raise the guard a little bit, which he did. And the thing with Jamil Chan is you know he's only ever one shot away from ending the fight. That's yeah. the kind of power, that's the kind of danger he possesses, and he's really working on the body here. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Went body head, but it elicited the response that the corner of Isi Isakov wanted, that being the takedown. Both fighters just tough as nails, really, because Isakov has been taking some hard shots, but powers through them, gets top position. And on the other side of it, you got Jamil Chan, who's being thrown on his back time and time again. That is the times when he hasn't been able to sprawl and defend it. But so far, he's gonna, done a pretty good job at getting back up most of the time. Isa Isakov keeping their hips really low, forcing Chan to carry the weight of both of them like a, like a centrifugal point right down the center of the body. And again, the story of the fight so far for me has been Jamil Chan trying to mount that offense, landing some, landing some great strikes, but then perhaps being guilty of overcommitting a little bit, thus setting up the takedown or, yeah. or inviting the takedown for Isa Isakov. I think a little bit more control in those striking exchanges would do Jamil Chan a lot of good. Because, like, for example, when he landed that, uh, that high kick and he was just winging those hooks, I mean, just a little bit more control and posure, uh, composure, he, he might have been able to, to finish Isakov there. Big strikes being landed, big points being accumulated by Isa Isakov. And another round finished off with Isakov on top and Jamil Chan eating ground and pound, pound on the bottom. Yeah, Isa Isakov, for me, if, if, if he were a footballer, he'd be Roy Keane. Because he does the fundamentals, but he does them so well. He's not necessarily spectacular in any one, uh, mm -hmm. any one facet of mixed martial arts, but he puts everything together so well and employs absolutely wonderful fundamentals. Definitely, and without without solid fundamentals, everything comes crashing down. So it is something that's you know perhaps discounted and overlooked a little bit. A lot of fighters can focus on too many flashy techniques and stuff like that. Yeah. But you know, if you don't have some solid ground to stand on, it's not going to work. You can't build a house without foundations. There you have it. Again, the, the, the balance of this fight finally poised. It really depends on how the judges interpret the, the takedowns versus uh, the strikes landed. Yeah. I still feel though that Disakov is probably ahead. Also seems to be the fresher fighter heading into the final round here, and there we go. A little show of respect from both men, as you would expect after two hard fought rounds. Spanning oh. back kick from Isi Isakov. And I think that's definitely the right move because you, you, we've had two rounds now where Isakov was really pressed and uh, pressed for the takedown. So why not open up with a couple, uh, you know, head kicks and high and hard strikes to just sort of change up the rhythm of the fight a little bit? And it may also beat Jamil Chan into standing for a little bit, yeah. planting those feet again. Yeah, draw him into a firefight and then take him down. Maybe it would be a very smart move. The, the danger being... Oh, oh! Jamil Chan caught him there. I'd like to see him follow up a little bit. That was a heavy right hand from Dynamite Chan. Nice defense again there. This fight is so finely poised. You can truly feel the... Oh, just a little bit of a slip there, yeah. But you can truly feel the tension because, I mean, Jamil Chan is always just one strike away from ending the fight. He landed a high kick there, but I think it was partially blocked and didn't necessarily come with all the conviction needed. You see trying to put, or starting to put his hands together quite nicely here. It's and again, there's that Dutch style leg kick. And I feel like we should have seen a, a little more of those leg kicks early on because that would have really benefited him this late in the fight. Just me is the right eye of uh, Jamil Chan starting to swell up a little bit. Yeah, I think it's probably some of those elbows from the, from the top for uh, Frisakar that did that. Again, good defense from Chan. And defending the takedown with that kind of frequency in this round, it's bound to give... Oh, that's a nice oh, combination yeah. landed by Izakov. But Chan just eats it like a champ. Oh, oh beautiful. Nice. Look low with that, almost a quasi question mark kick. Digs trying to the body. Rip, trying to rip to the body. I think he may have momentarily taken a little yeah. bit of wind out of him there. Yeah, I think he needs to go for it. Yeah, here. he's covering up a little bit on that side of the body. Again, working the body, but... Isa Isakov, the story of this fight yeah. has been the strikes landed versus the instantaneous takedown to get himself out of danger from Isakov. Absolutely, Phil. And I think that 
Chan had a little moment there where he could have sort of run away with a fight, but I think he recognized the power of that strike a little bit too late, couldn't really capitalize. Iskov had enough time to sort of collect himself and recover. And now landing right into that side control position. Might work from here to, to just shimmy the hips over and go knee on belly. Well, potentially could take the back here. Yeah. I think that might be what he, what he goes for. Has one hook in, but again, as we've said in previous fights, uh, you, you transition from taking the back to mount, so for the guy on the bottom, it really is a pick-your-poison position. Yeah. I mean, and here we are again with Isak coming full mount, raining down elbows. Right in the corner of Jamil Chan. Trying to buck those hips and get out underneath the back. Okay. Great work from Chan. Nicely done, but he's got to go for it. Trying to defend that takedown. Doing all the right things by pushing down the head. Isakov recognizes it, switches, grabs the ankle. And a slightly frustrated look on the face yeah. of Daniel Chan at this stage. A bit dejected and, you know, I, I can understand it. He tried his best. To he, he just got an out of that position. Was trying to defend but just didn't really do enough to stop from ending up on top. That was... An Anderson Silva-esque knee to the, to the body, I think yeah. that was. You gotta be careful though, so you don't end up a little bit high. Again, he may just slide that knee down again. And you have to give credit to Jamil in this position. He does have the butterfly hook. He's constantly trying to work. As I say that, nice. uses it to try and get up, but completely railroaded there. Yeah, like a leech. Isakov just stayed on him. And he's going to pull out the legs from under him there, there. Yeah, nicely done. Very smart work there from Isa Isikov. And a real workmanlike performance from Isikov. Yeah, I mean, really just showing a very strong base of skills here. But look at the, the heart and will of Jamil Dynamite Chan. Never out of a fight. And as you say, with... With 30 seconds left in the round, there's still scope for someone like Jamil Chan to do oh, yeah. something big. Especially now, we're separated. I mean, this this is this is do or die. This is all or nothing for Jamil Chan. He can still land that knockout punch, but he looks tired, though. You 20 know, seconds left now. You know a fighter like Jamil Chan always has that one hit or quitter left in the tank. But right now, he needs to throw big. He needs to throw hard. His movements are a little too labored, though. I think a lot of those grappling exchanges took too much out of him. And if we look at that on the face of what we've seen on those three rounds, it really was a striker versus grappler confrontation. And Absolutely. And very intelligent work done by Isa Isakov. You have to give him credit for, for having a game plan, sticking to it, recognizes the strengths of his opponent, not being ego-driven and saying, okay, this guy's a great striker, I'm going to stand with him. I'm going to take the fight where I feel most comfortable, where I feel I can win the fight, uh, and doing so expertly. Yeah, and also recovering from some very tough positions. I mean, let's not forget the head kick that he uh, that he absorbed, and then uh, now in the third round, he took some heavy shots to the, to, the, to the body that definitely seemed to have him hurt, but he did not let those strikes put him away. A serious... Serious heart and resilience from Jamil Chan. And, and as I say, when he puts it together, he's yeah. one of the best in the world. But it's. We saw glimpses of that here. I mean, where he managed to reverse positions, get out last of strikes, but he just could not get. There was just not enough consistency with what he was trying to achieve. Let's make things official and send it up to our MC, Mr. Lance Murdoch. Once again, we consult the judges' scorecards. I can tell you that all three of our judges scored it 30-27. It is a unanimous decision. To the red corner, Isa Isakov! Inside the Brave CF, 58 cage. Three final rounds in the super lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and two losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 74.9 kilograms. 
representing Soko Team and Bulgarian Top Team and fighting out of Belgium. Please welcome Isa the Determinator, Isa Cole. Introducing to his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and six losses. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.5 kilograms. Representing IFS Belfast and fighting out of Northern Ireland by way of Poland. Give it up for Magic, Magic Man, Gerd Shevsky. Than it ordinarily is. We could not, we cannot always get all the personnel that we want. Magic Gershevsky's corner was not able to come. My broadcast partner, Phil Campbell, the Irish Thunder, is actually stepping in and he is in Magic's corner. I'm going to be joined here by Carlos Kramer, the Roaring Lion of Brave. The Roaring Lion is sitting down with me right now and the fight is underway. We've been waiting for this one, Kirik, for a long time. A lot of buildup onto this fight. This is such a beautiful contrast in styles. You got somebody who can knock you out with one punch versus somebody who is very hard to knock out, as we saw in that bout with Jamil Chan. Jamil trying to throw land those huge, huge shots. They were avoided for 15 full minutes. Kirik, this has the potential to be the fight of the night. These two styles are matching up beautifully inside the cage. Both men are on a roll coming into the prime of their career. Tell us about how important a victory is at this stage of their career. Uh, this is huge, particularly in Majik's case. He's not getting any younger. He, a big win could push him into very, very close to title contention. A loss would push him perhaps impossibly far away. In that sense, what's riding on this fight? Everything. And you're going to see him fight like it. Maja Krzyzewski is going to throw everything with knockout intentions. He's a classic example, Kirik, of somebody who's evolved their game later in their career and getting their rhythm and their groove late in their career, which has worked out perfectly for him. Krzyzewski gets all of his wins by stoppage. He can be tapped and... Isa Isakov is a tap machine. Isakov in, imposing his will on Gershevsky right now. Gershevsky very calm, doing what he can to stay under control. This Bray of CF 58 Monster Zim night has been incredible, ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation. As we've discussed earlier, this is one of the great tests of strength in mixed martial arts requires a great deal of technique, great deal of leverage in order to get the exact position you want. Isa Isakov got it and then he parlayed that into a takedown. Very nice, Kirik. Controlling from the top. This has been a challenge for Magic Man. He would much rather be standing and banging. But his ground game has come a lot through lately and he has uh, shown a lot of well-roundedness in his game. His ground game is improving uh, enormously, more so by my reckoning from the top than from the bottom. Very, very hard in mixed martial arts to develop a great offensive guard game. Gershevsky likely gonna try and hold on, work defensively here. At some point, put those feet into the hips, kick off, try and get back up to standing. Isakov is well aware of that, keeping those hips tight, tight, tight to his opponent. Very effective use of the head. If Isakov can keep his head above his opponent's head, it becomes very, very hard to get off that floor. And what Isakov's doing right now is stealing the round if he can keep this up. He is, he's landing not a huge number of shots, but enough to, enough to keep it on the ground. Strategically, he's probably, and you're seeing it right there, he's gonna go body and then head. The headshots caused by far more damage, but if you throw those, which many fighters do, they go straight for the head, it's relatively easy to thwart. You go to the body first, get the elbows down a little bit, and then the head is right there. You can see Magic Man's ribs very rare, red from the shots he's been taking. Isakov with a great game plan so far, Kirik. 
He is indeed. One of the things I try and try and communicate to Brave Nation is when you see something on the television screen, these little shots on the ground don't look like much, but when you see when you see them from up close and when you hear them, you can actually feel them. You realize they're hitting hard, and then you look at the body, you see that reddened body, and you realize these are not pity pads. Incredibly tough, both men. What a night. Making history tonight with Monster Zim. Unbelievable South Korean audience. Phenomenal, has been so hospitable. So hospitable, phenomenal showcase for the great Korean heart. And when I say heart, I mean it in terms of bravery and also in terms of kindness. Isakov now trapping that arm only briefly. Krzyzewski trying to throw elbows from bottom. Has worked in the history of the sport, but less than a handful of times. That was the clapper you just heard, Brave Nation. It means there's 10 seconds left. That brings us down to about five right now. We're just about to hear the round ending horn. And then the fighter's gonna go back to their corner. I am not a judge here tonight, but there is little question in my mind that that was a 10-9 round for Isa Isakov. That's exactly how I had it as well. We've got to talk about the fans here as well and the athletes in South Korea. Just incredible to showcase this great nation again. Another, our 26th country with Brave. Five continents we've been in, just shattering records across the world. And Kira, giving the fighters who deserve the exposure, the support and the platform that they've never gotten before from any other promotion. But Brave will find you. Absolutely. And that's true not just on a fighter for fighter by fighter basis, but we're also giving the top fighters in Korea a chance not simply to fight each other, but to fight the entire world. We've got eight Korea versus the world bouts here. This one is actually one of the exceptions that proves the rule. Here we've got England by way of Poland versus Belgium. This is a Europe versus Europe bout. But the vast majority of bouts on this card are either Korea versus Korea or Korea versus the world. Let's see how this pivotal round can go. Gershevsky trying to stay on his feet. Gershevsky able to get that single with very little trouble. He was able to keep his opponent down again without a great deal of trouble for the entire latter portion of round one. He may be able to, he is going to attempt to do it here in the second round. Referee is going to need to see a fair amount of action to allow it to stay in the ground that entire time. Brave Nation, what the referees are looking for here is either damaging strikes or furthering position or furthering the setup for a submission. Simply staying on top, not enough. Isakov is moving very well, keeping that control and showing his dominance. On the shots that you're seeing right here alone, they're enough to keep the they're enough to keep the fight on the ground. You're also going to see him trying to further position. He's going to try and get past that half guard, end up in top side control or even mount. There's an attempt. There's the pass to side control, and it is successful. Beautiful to a crucifix. That arm is now trapped. The far arm is in danger of being trapped, and here come the elbows. There is very little defense to these elbows from this position. Isakov just landing shot after shot, having incredible positioning. What does Gershevsky have to do right here to get out of this? He's got to run in one direction, which he's starting to do, and then switch directions and twist his body simultaneously. He didn't yank his body sideways quite enough. Isakov landing shot after shot with his elbow punches. Astonishingly, these shots are not causing any cuts yet, but they are going to. Only a matter of time. There we go. Now the elbow's in on the body. And it's trapped again. Isa Isakov is relentless in this attack. He is relentless with these elbows. Relentless with positional dominance. Oh. Isakov having a beautiful strategy so far. Grzeszewski saying very, very cool. Seeing if he can find that window again. Elbows to the face. He's not going to be able to take much more of that. Grzeszewski needs to get on his side. Once needs to get on that side, then start, and it's over. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Isa Isakov with the victory, and what a performance by him.
The Magic Man put up an incredible fight. Both guys were incredibly conditioned, and Isakov just had the better strategy and the better ground game and took his will out on him. Excellent officiating there in the Brave Combat Federation cage. That was a very, very good stoppage. Majek Gershevsky could have taken more damage. He's capable of it. He's as tough as they come. However, he did not show the ability to escape from that position. Isa Isakov did show the ability to throw a virtually unlimited number of downward elbows. The referee wisely stopped the bout. No serious injury to Majek Gershevsky tonight. Thanks not to those elbows from Isa Isakov because they are deadly thanks to the terrific officiating that was on display there. Big props to the referee. Koreans are not just great fighters, they are not just great human beings, they are great officials too. Here's another replay, courtesy of Monster Zim. You can just see these elbows and punches landing relentlessly. After over a minute, of continuous shots without a single shot landing. In response, the referee very wisely decided to stop it. Phenomenal display of positional dominance from Isa Isakov. Phenomenal display of what you can do when you have positional dominance. And that is pretty much anything you want to as far as strikes go. With that said, Carlos Kramer, make it official, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another classic battle inside the Brave CF 58 Monsters in Cage. This bout ends in the second round at 2 minutes and 27 seconds. Your winner by TKO, due to strikes, Isa, the Determinator, Isa Kov. we go, Brave Nation! This next bout is three five-minute rounds in the super lightweight division. Introducing your first contestant, fighting out of the blue corner! This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and four losses. He stands 179 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 74.42 kilograms. Representing Top Team Zagreb and fighting out of Lebanon. Please welcome Ahmed the Shadow Laban. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and two losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 75.18 kilograms. Representing Soko Team Luxembourg and Bulgarian top team and fighting out of Belgium. Please welcome Isa Determinator, Isa Bonnet. This fight at distance, start letting those hands and feet go, and he begins. Bladed stance, gonna pop in and out. See the hands low, inviting Isa Isakov and Taekwondo asking his execution. He's so loose in the cage. Popping that jab off from the hip, keeping it out of the periphery, peripheral vision of your opponent. Isakov trying to close that distance. The shadow doing a good job, but keeping a little bit of distance between him and the fence. And he's going to have to stay on the bike. He has to be careful. Cuts a beautiful angle. Well, Ahmed Laban can this in and out motion light on the feet. He can maintain that for all three rounds, no problem. Not a lot of kicking so far from Ahmed Laban. Doesn't want to get the, the leg caught. 
for those who used to seeing a fighter keeping their hands up, what you're seeing now is defense via distance management. Staying far enough away so when an attack gets launched, you can see it coming and dodge out of the way as we saw right there. Laban did a good job there of following up the missed kick with just enough of a jab to put in the face of Isakov to halt his momentum forward. And there's the inevitable takedown from Isakov. How good is the takedown defense of Laban? We will find out now, Kerik. Laban's got the beginning of a figure four, got the beginning of a Kimura, but only the beginning. They want to switch to an elbow, there we go. A Little bit of a warning from the referee. Imagine, Brave Nation, a cell phone on the very top of your head, run it down your back, you cannot hit that area. Another way to think of it is, if you hit somewhere in the, the rear periphery of the head, you gotta hit a little bit of ear that did not happen here two fighters are separated interestingly though taking away that position might be advantageous to Laban I don't Ooh. think the shadow minded that he needs to get his back off the cage oh stagger he caught him Ahmed Laban is just that dangerous beautiful sprawl does have a win by ninja choke trying to get in on that guillotine that looks tight from Ahmed Laban could it be the elbow's getting lower, the elbow's low, and this is tight! He's putting everything he can into this. This is tight! Isa Isakov Wants going to get on red. Side just a little bit! Oh, that is so tight. Isa Isakov gutting it out, showing his Bill, toughness. Unbelievable! To steal a phrase from our friend Brad Ward in there, unbelievable! You wonder just how much because Ahmed Laban went for broke with that guillotine. How much has that taken out of him? And right now he finds himself in bottom position. Not where you want to be with someone like Isa Isakov bearing down on top of you. We're exactly at the halfway point. Been extremely exciting so far. I have every expectation this is going to continue. So Brave Nation, do not blink. Again, Laban's showing just how dangerous he was. I was so quick, I didn't see what the shot, the shot was that caught Isa Isakov. Might be in a check hook. I'll need to wait to the end of the round to see back the replay. The shadow moves quicker than the human eye can comprehend. Body, body, head. This is textbook ground and pound. Fighters typically open up with the fists and then graduate when they get a little bit closer to the elbows. It's a big shot. That wasn't just a, a pitter pat shot to the body from Issa Coffee. Put a lot into that. Laban clamping down on the head. Brave Nation, that these shots are not an attempt to rack up points to play to the judges. These shots have bad intentions. Maybe potential for a little bit of payback here for Isakov. Free him off and get the elbow in. Oh, beautiful blow from Laban. Oh, Laban is calm as you like, almost disdainful. Isa Isakov once again closes the distance, gets the body lock, gets the takedown. Laban wanted it just a little bit too much. Overcommitted slightly, didn't he, Herrick? Attempt to move to mount. This that is was denied. This We're is back up to standing. It's fantastic work from Ahmed Laban to work his way to get up. Isa Isakov just so dominant in these positions. I did say at the start of the, the broadcast during our intro, he who controls the wrestling controls where the fight goes, Kirk. Howsomever, and this is going to be the big question in the judge's mind about 26 seconds from now. How much do you count a shot that dropped the opponent yep. and left him heavily, heavily wobbled? A difficult one. Oh, Determinator. Two hooks in. Determinator, not so much I'll be back as I'll take your back. How much time does he have? 10, Ten seconds. seconds. Not a lot of time to work at all, but a very dangerous position and almost a warning shot fired from Isa Isakov. Fantastic first round. But that had pretty much everything, Kirik. A knockdown, dominant wrestling, a near submission. Let's see the shot that did it. Given the 
we had a knockdown, a brutal knockdown that left the opponent wobble. We had a very, very close submission. How do you score that round? How do you score that round with great difficulty? Let's see that shot again. Nope, not seeing that shot again. Back take, take down short to follow. There was a back take from a different angle. Once he sees the cough, has his hands locked together around your torso. A take down oh, is inevitable, there it was. It's a beautiful lead short hook. Left hook, quick as you like. Laban still light on his feet, ready to go. Touch of the gloves and we're ready to go. Second round. The formidable, near unstoppable wrestling of Isa Isakov. Laban in his sideways, bladed stance. Bouncing just a little bit less now. And the pinpoint striking accuracy of Ahmed Laban. Already marked up the face of Isa Isakov a little. Big overhand swing and a miss from Isakov. Incredible composure being exhibited again from Ahmed Laban. Looks so calm, unflinching. The shadow measuring, measuring, measuring with that lead hand, measuring with his eyes, trying to set up the straight, possibly the hook. There was the straight. He needs to be careful. He sees a cough whilst predominantly a wrestler, still has big power. Flying knee attempt. Laban needs to get on his bike here. Oh, beautiful way to finish. But Laban, like a powered up Pac Man, up to his feet. Forcing Isa Isakov to work his socks off to get the takedown. What a Sweep frenetic attempt. scramble. Isa Isakov will not be denied his takedowns. Amid the Shadow Laban showing absolutely terrific defense against the takedowns, but it is not enough thus far. Against the cage, now he's going to have to post to an elbow, then an arm. But he has done a good job when he has to, creating that space from these positions to get up. But as the fight progresses, as time goes on, it becomes more and more difficult. Laban controlling that head, Brave Nation, when the fighter on top can't posture all the way back, it very much limits the power behind those shots. The shadow holding tight onto that head. It means any punches coming in are going to be arm punches. You can get a little bit of power with arm punches with distance, but you can't get the hips behind them, can't get momentum behind them. You say he's a cough to, oh, Ahmed Laban trying to work for a guillotine here. Can't quite see if he has it. Elbow, Nick. elbow far too high right now. Readjusting on it. Isa Isakov taking his time. He's been in this position before. Doesn't look like he's in trouble. Tripoding up, doing the right thing. Ahmed Laban needs to be wary of burning out his arms here. Last thing he wants to do is gas himself out with regards to his arms and still have another round to go. There's two minutes of this round still to go. Isakov did a great job of just riding out the difficult position. Pass attempt. Scramble up denied. Oh, great job of just pulling that leg out and elevating it. Isakov, such an intelligent, intelligent wrestler. Isakov will now return to landing. Short, sharp, painful shots. Pass is almost complete, and it's complete. Isakov, a product of that IMAF structure, 2018 IMAF European silver medalist, 2017 IMAF world bronze medalist, so he does have that incredible IMAF experience. They turn to the mount here. Laban trying to bridge, but Isa Isakov so strong in these positions. Excellent use of the head from Isakov. He was turning his opponent's head away so the opponent couldn't see the incoming shots. Yeah. 
deep into the final minute of the second round. Isa Isakov trying to take the sting out of the forward momentum of Isa Isakov. Oh, sorry, of Ahmed Laban. And it's very smart from this position. Wear on your opponent, trying to plate his gas tank, try and make him tired. Because that explosive in and out movement is a hallmark of Ahmed Laban's fighting style. Whilst the crucifix is a hallmark of Isa Isakov's style. This is how he finished Magic Koshevsky. Does he have enough time to land the shots? Tremendous tap control. Ten seconds left. Can Ahmed Laban survive to the third round? He's got, he's got the arm control, the near arm control. Elbows coming down. Fist coming down. Round in. Isa Isakov looks regenerated, rejuvenated, ready to go. Laban so dangerous. Only ever one shot away from turning your lights out. Laban fainting a spin kick. Isa needs to be, needs to exercise a little bit of composure here himself. He can't go chasing and get caught like he did in the first round. Phil Laban is fatigued now. Oh, the yes. feet are not doing what he needs them to do. They are not maintaining distance anymore. Issa Isakov is now determining the distance. Laban needs to get his back off that cage. Oh, tried to jump knee, but then hit a big shot himself. That's the effect of fatigue. And there is the takedown again. Oh, beautiful. Turned the corner wonderfully. Issa Isakov just like... Fantastic powerhouse wrestler. You may as well just practice your get-ups if you're going to fight Issa Isakov because there's no point in really working to take the defense because you will get taken down. Doesn't matter who you are. The determinator determines to take you down. You're going down. And then, as you said, Phil, it's up to you to try and get back up. I don't think I'm at the Shadow of Bomb has what's what he needs to stand back up carrot for people who don't know describe just how horrible that knee on belly feeling is it feels like what i imagine a mouse feels like when it's being eaten by a boa constrict you absolutely <laughs> cannot breathe and that fills a human being it fills the human spirit with panic Isikov has essentially three minutes with which to work here. If he can get himself into that crucifix position like he did at the end of the second round and just throw down those elbows. He's working his way towards it very methodically. He's past the half guard. He's got the forearm trapped already. Before too long, he's gonna try and grab that, that left wrist, step over it, and that may be the beginning of the end. East Isakov doing a terrific technical job of maintaining positional control. Oh, beautiful short elbows from Isakov, and man has a gas tank for days. Looking for that near knee on belly, and all the while, raining shots to the body, raining punches to the head, raining elbows to the head. Absolute object misery. Looking for an arm bar. Good switch to Kimura here. Object misery on the face of Ahmed Laban here. Isakov yeah. did win via armbar in his Brave Combat Federation debut against Rami Ahmed all the way back in 2019. You see Isakov very briefly tried to set up an armbar. We'll see whether he learned something. 
He may have seen a little mistake in the defense and he'll try and take advantage of it. He may have thought he didn't really have a chance, in which case he's going to be trying some other finish. Just under two minutes, Brave Nation. And even if Ahmed Laban does get back to his feet, how much does he have left to mount something offensive? Less than he did, Phil, at the beginning of the round. Isakov has the mount available to him, but he's just solidifying the position here. There's that knee on belly again. Oh, it's crushing. Isakov is not content simply throwing shots from top. He wants the finish in this fight, and he's going to try to set it up. Turn the hips. Back again. And final minute of transition into the mind. And looking for the mount from there. There's going to be big shots raining down. May take that arm. He's offering the arm. May take an arm shot. Credit to LeBron. He's still trying, still trying to create space, but... Isa Isakov has pretty much been unstoppable in this third and final round. Isa Isakov has the legs great fine now. Gives him a great platform for which to throw. Big shots. Rip find the legs. Uh, LeBron perhaps just delaying the inevitable, but LeBron valiantly still trying to escape. Ten seconds now, Brave Nation. Strong finish from Isa Isakov. Rode out the early adversity when he was dropped by that short hook from Ahmed LeBron. Implemented a stellar game plan with the takedowns, with the wrestling. Credit to Ahmed Laban, was able to defend some of the early takedowns, but again, the inevitability of the takedowns from Isa Isakov could not be denied. Phil, I said in the beginning that this was an exercise in problem solving. I'm in the shadow, Laban had to keep at distance. He's the determinator, Isakov had to keep it slow, and he had to keep it close, and he did. There you see, dropped the level, turned the corner to get the take time when he realized he couldn't get the hands connected. And from here, it was elbows, short shots. Giving Ahmed Laban absolutely no space or time with which to get back into his feet. A clinical performance from Isa Isakov. The only question, Phil, is, and I'll ask you, is this a 30-27 fight or a 29-28 fight? I, I think it would be on the balance of play. I think it would be fair to say 30-27, but again, I'm a commentator in this capacity right here, right now, seeing things that judges don't see. Given the knockdown, given that close submission attempt, I'm liking 29-28, but it's all for naught because it's going to be a unanimous decision for Issa, determinator, Issa Kong. What you just saw right there, Brave Nation, was the fighter shaking hands with his opponent's corner. Good sportsmanship, a hallmark of the Brave Combat Federation cage and as well of the sport of mixed martial arts. The two fighters inevitably extend respect to each other and then go to their opponent's corner, the person who was just telling their opponent how to beat them, and you shake hands there too. He's the Determinator Isakov, now back with his corner. Fighters are being called to center stage. Big man, take it away. All right, another incredible contest inside the Brave CF NFC cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 29-27. Your next two judges score about 30-26 for your winner. By unanimous decision, out of the red corner, Isa Determinator Isa Paul. All right, Brave Nation, this next historic battle is free. Five in a round, 
Finals in the Super Lightweight Division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins and two losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 72.45 kilograms. Representing Golden Team and Kings MMA and fighting out of Russia, please welcome Ruslan And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This fan is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and two losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 75.2 kilograms. Representing Soko team and Bulgarian top team and fighting out of Belgium. Put your hands together for Isa, the Determinator. Isa! Your referee in charge of the action is Velmir Mladinov. Big thanks to our sponsor, Doga. Again, big thanks to our sponsor, Doga. Isa Isakov has a couple of fans in the arena. Again, I think the clinch is going to be the most decisive part of this fight, but as we often see when two high-level grapplers go against one another, it can often turn into a little bit of a kickboxing bout. Oh, spin and back kick from Ruslan. Beautiful right technique, went all the way down low to the calf, then the other side all the way up to the head. Expect to see more strikes coming out of nowhere. Cage Rust obviously not a fighter for Ruslan Tedev in the opening stanzas of this bout. More so just trying to get a gauge of one another right now, Kirik. Clearly Ted respectful of one another's abilities. Tedev shifted briefly there. Didn't seem right to him. May shift again to try and throw his opponent off. Brave Nation shifting is putting one side forward instead of the usual one. It's like being dropped on a road in America if you're used to driving the United Kingdom. It's a little confusing at first. Where I come from. Oh, oh throw, big shot big the shots. Ear. Oh, again, Ruslan Tedev putting absolutely everything into these shots. Isa Isakov does the right thing, gets out of danger, doesn't want to stand in the pocket if he doesn't have to. Tedev was punching furiously there. There's always a question in my mind, Phil. Oh! oh! Beautiful shot from Isakov. Heard the slap of that ringing out here in the Stark Arena. It's going to say there's always a question in my mind. If you throw too many punches this early, your opponent can counter. Isa Isakov, shot a big takedown from Isakov. Ruslan trying to roll for a leg. Isakov needs to be careful here. Doesn't want to give Ruslan the space to swing his right leg around and try and get that knee bar. You can see Isakov keeping everything compact and, and could almost work here for his own uh, crucifix position. He did finish Majek Gershevsky with strikes from the crucifix position. Brave Nation, this is what we were talking about earlier. Combat Sambo is a sport that basically invented leg locks, along with catch wrestling. Head arm triangle attempt, possibly. Nope. Not quite yet. May take the back. He's being smart. He has his hands tied up. He can't punch, so he's landing big knees. Oh, beautiful work from Isakov. Has that hand around the hip, completely incapacitating Ruslan Tedev takes the back, no hooks in just yet. Trying to punch his way through to get the arm for the choke. Halfway through the fight, tables do appear to be turning a little bit. What a shot landed by Isakov. Oh, one hook in. Watch and see if the second hook goes in, Brave Nation. Hasn't happened yet. If it does, could be the beginning of the end. Right now, Isakov looking really good in control. He's gone palm to palm on the choke here, Kirik. We got He's both hooks in. We got some downward pressure. Got a short choke in place, Brave Nation. He's hipping in. He's gone gable grip on the hands. And He's not quite underneath the chin, but he does have it on the jaw, which is incredibly uncomfortable. I don't think Ruslan's in a crazy amount of danger, but this is unquestionably uncomfortable. Isakov needs to adjust a little bit to get underneath the chin. Tedev showing terrific strength and fortitude in getting out of that. 
Howsomever, those hooks are in. He's got his opponent flattened out again. Uh -oh. Trying a different strategy. Raining down punches in bunches. Up. Oh, and gives up the mount. It was a pick your poison kind of position. Frank Payne into fire. More punches coming. And you have to give credit to the Serbian fans here in Belgrade. They applauded the transition to the mount, showing just how educated they are in the sport of mixed martial arts. Isa Isakov in complete control right now. Solidifying the position. 50 seconds, less than a minute left in the round, Kirik. Do you anticipate Isakov will try and open up and get that finishing? Again, takes the back. Again, one hook in, looking for the second one. We got a choke in place, Brave Nation. Bicep grip this time. Can't quite see if he's underneath the, the chin from this position, but even a gargantuan squeeze, if it's not underneath the chin, can unless at the top. Tap given up. Here comes the punches. Again. That's getting a little closer. As dominant a round as we have seen from Isa Isakov in his professional career. And Kirik on the balance of play, on the, the level of domination there from Determinator Isa Isakov. Could you make an argument for a 10-8 round? You could make an argument for a 10-8 round, but I don't think it would be a valid one in this case because Ruslan Tedev did have a very good showing in the first portion of that round. It was not a completely one-sided beatdown. Let's have a look at this replay, Phil, courtesy of Doga. Huge shots. Landed from Ruslan. There was a fantastic, I believe it was a right hook landed by Isa Isakov, rolled underneath, landed a beautiful shot from there. He scored a takedown, and this is just fantastic work. And if you're in the corner of Isa Isakov, you're going to be saying just more of the same, my friend. Lather, rinse, repeat. But if you're in the corner of Ruslan Tedev, what are you telling him right now so that the second round is not a carbon copy of the first? The bout turned when he threw a few too many punches in a combination and got countered hugely. That's when the bout turned. You tell him to be a, stay aggressive, but be a little bit more sparing with those combinations. Don't put a second shot after the first one unless that first one lands. Simply flurrying in front of a man like Isi Isakov is not a good strategy. So strong for the weight division is Isa Isakov. Spin and back fest, but another big right hook from Isa Isakov. He's, he's landing really well on the counters here. He's anticipating the forward momentum of Ted Evan and in doing so is landing those counters. But that's a big leg kick from Ted Ev. Oh, attempts the knee. But Isa Isakov still scores the takedown. As tough as they come. And right now, this is exactly where he wants to be, Kerrick. Nice short elbow. Tedev Phil is ferociously muscled. That is not always an advantage in this sport. Heavily, heavily muscled competitors can tire easily. All those muscles do take a lot of oxygen. We may see Ruslan Tedev sucking for oxygen pretty soon. And right now, Isa Isakov, he's able to conserve energy in this position, landing off strikes to keep himself honest, but it's the, the depletion of that energy meter of Ruslan Tedev that's going to be so telling as that fight progresses. This is Brave Nation, literally a day in the office for Issa Isakov. So methodical in his approach. Steps over beautifully into half guard, the anchor position as it's been known. Arm choke will not be available that close to the fence. And he's Kuff working that arm up with his head. So dominant in these positions is Isa Isakov. Oh, beautiful short knee right into the ribs. That again is going to deplete the gas tank. Brave Nation with that arm pushed up, that area of the body stretched out and bent slightly. Those little knees, they're big. Tedev trying to hit the Kimura trap. May not necessarily be looking for the submission, but can use this as a means to roll or transition. But it's a dicey move because he may end up giving the back. Isakov takes the back and 
It's almost as if someone put a bet on with Isa that he had to win his next fight via rear naked choke. It's almost like somebody had a bet with him that there's one area on his opponent's body that he didn't hit. He's landing <laughs> shots to the liver. He's landing shots to the spleen all over the head, all over the body. Working slowly, methodically. Great economy and efficiency of energy from Isa Isakov. Phil, you had referenced whether round one was a 10-8. I said it was not in my opinion. In my opinion, this is a 10-8 round. Isa just grinding away on Ruslan Tedev. So dominant. Isakov absolutely relentless with attacks. A lot of fighters have a striking centered attack. Other fighters will have a submission centered attack. Isa Isakov is flowing back and forth between submission attempts and strikes absolutely perfectly. And you can hear the thud from these strikes. And Is Isa Isakov just. Oh, has he got the choke this time, Kirik? Has that reverse half guard. He's underneath That's the it. chin. He's, it. Out. He's out. Out. Go the lights. He went out. I, Ruslan Terev didn't realize he went out, but he definitely went out. A great stoppage by the referee. Perfect stoppage by the referee. Also perfectly understandable response there from Ruslan Terev. Brave Nation, he literally did not realize that his lights went out. Happens all the time. That reaction was no smear against the referee. Simply, literally, did not know what happened. Isai Isakov with the fourth win by submission in his career. His second via rear naked choke. And he is now five and one in Brave Combat Federation. And like I say, surely knocking on the door of title contention. Watching a replay now, courtesy of Doga. That was the beginning of the end. Got one hook in. Chokes in place, it's cutting off the carotid. The biceps cutting off the carotid. There. The forearms cutting off the carotid. No blood going to the brain. Opponent goes out momentarily. Didn't realize it. Good stoppage by the referee. Respects being shown now by the winner, Isa Isakov, going over to his opponent's corner, expending, extending thanks, expending respect to the corner. This is the kind of sportsmanship, the kind of character that defines Brave Combat Federation. And Brave Nation, when you see acts like that, no one asks them to do it. Everything that happens in Brave Combat Federation is heartfelt. Speaking of heartfelt, we've got the Roaring Lion, Carlos Kramer, in the Brave Combat Federation cage. And he's just about to make it official. All right, Brave Nation, another epic battle inside the Brave CF Serbia 69 cage. This one. Comes to an end at 3 minutes and 55 seconds of the very second round. Your winner by rear naked choke, give it up for Isa, the Determinator, Isa! <laughs>